Alright. There's nobody here, and I don't suspect anyone to, uh, to even show up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I do have a tickle in my throat. Um, yeah, I thought I'd just go on here again tonight for fun, just because I am just going to be doing a little bit of doodling on, on the XP pen, and I thought, well, maybe I can go live again. I didn't really intend to, but I thought, no, nah, why not? Maybe just for fun. Um, I had shot a video on drawing the eye, and I didn't like it. I kept re-editing and re-editing, and I shot it again and re-edited it. I just wasn't liking it, and I almost feel like just kind of going over that here and I'll do it as a live stream where I can talk and uh, be a little more comfortable and not have to worry about trying to edit down tight. The problem is when I talk I I don't talk very um, what's the word it's hard for me to keep in a, a good continual sentence I break a lot I have a lot of ums and ahs I stop a lot for thought so, I don't know, maybe as, as I do this and I become more comfortable in sort of a conversational way, maybe that might help, I don't know. But I'll just do this tonight, I guess. There's there's nobody online. I don't know what it is. Like, Friday nights, everybody does a live stream. I, I mean, I open up my subscription page on YouTube and there's rows of, like, live stream, live stream, live stream. Holy cow. So... It's either a good night or a bad night to live stream because everybody's live streaming. Let me turn this down. Everybody's live streaming. So you, you might not get watched because everybody's picking out, picking, out, picking out something else they might rather watch. <laughs> As a smaller channel like mine, I can't see too many people jumping on. Um, so... But if you're really popular, it's a great night to, to live stream. Everybody's on there. Uh, I ended up watching a couple, and it wasn't until after they uh, they were done that I decided to kind of go on. But uh, then I come on here Saturday, and there's nobody. I'm thinking, I would thought that would have been another good night to live stream. I, I know what it is. Like... Friday night and Saturday night are kind of the two party nights. You're either out partying or that's the night you're kind of at home doing stuff. That's when you want to be online and playing games, watching YouTube, that kind of thing. So I figured both nights. But for some reason, Friday night's the busy night and Saturday's dead. Sunday, people got to go back to work in the morning, right? So Sunday afternoon can be a little bit busy because it's a lazy day Sunday afternoons. So maybe I could try tomorrow as well. I got a lot to do tomorrow. I might not get on right away. So, uh, uh, is this? Oh, it is. Okay. I need to just make sure this was still. Um, I'm kind of looking at it over here. I just want to make sure this was this was working properly. The setup was right. I'm using uh, sketchbook. Because it's nice and easy and it's a clean interface and I really like it. I feel like things like Photoshop is busier. Whoop. Where did everything go? Oops. <laughs> Here, let me reopen it. <laughs> I hit something I don't know what I hit and everything disappeared. What the hell? Like, everything disappeared. What did I hit that made everything disappear? This is not good. Um, layer editor? Everything vanished. That's so bizarre. And then I closed it. And, uh... Color puck. No, I want the color editor. I don't need the Copic library open right now. And, uh... There, so that's all I really need. <laughs> I said it's a nice clean interface and everything disappears. <laughs> all right. Oh, the thing at the top. Uh, the toolbar. There we go. What did I hit to make all that disappear? Good lord. So, um, I don't know, I thought it'd be fun to, uh, to draw the eye. 
And uh, even if nobody is watching this, I can record it and I can post it later. So, uh, and then the information's all there. <laughs> and the problem is, is that I'm getting uh, so long to getting around to this that probably nobody's going to sit through it. Uh, this is a little bit, a little big. So what I'll show you here is um, what I would call the basic uh, 101 uh, technique of drawing the eye. And I'm just kind of getting loosened up here a little bit. Because what I want to show you first is where it's kind of placed in the head. And you're like, well, straightforward, they're right here. <laughs> it's problem is everybody like draws a face. If, if, you're, if you don't used to drawing, everybody's just kind of like... <laughs> right it just kind of wherever and they draw they draw these eyes as a lower and upper loop and yeah you're not far off if you're doing that but here but i'll show you something here if you're drawing the head right we'll put the eye level down here really really quick and easy cross the eye level you're going to break that into five even spaces and you can see right here the eyes are going to go right here in space two in space four and right, let's just put the eyeballs in there the eyeballs pick that up from casper site if you're not familiar with casper site you have to look that one up yourself so let's take a close-up of this eye right here all right We'll draw it nice and big and we'll be loose. Uh, don't don't use if you're sketching on these and you're putting in rough work, don't use those um, uh, tools that make the circle for you and to make a perfect circle. You can, but I'll tell you your drawings end up looking very lifeless and it looks very flat. Uh, even though this is there's a whole bunch of lines and they're all over, uh, it has some, you end up bringing a little more life into it when you do it with your hand. And as you continue sketching and as you continue drawing and, and growing and drawing, you'll see why later on. Uh, you look at artists who draw loose and very rough and how incredible their drawings, their rough sketch drawings are, and they don't use those shape makers it's it's cheating and if you want to use it you can that's sort of up to you if you're looking to actually develop as an artist then no don't use them so this eyeball here <clears throat> i'm going to break that into thirds and by the way this thing fitting the eyes here into fifths everybody's head is different when you start drawing more portraits uh, people's faces um everybody's head is structured differently so this rule is not going to apply it's not the be all to end all to every human being you're going to find it's it, variances in the face as, as you look at different faces of different ages and different types of people so this is just a foundation to work from, um, which I think you kind of know what I mean. So fifths, or sorry, the, the eyeball we break into thirds. Now this eye, this this first line here, bring this line up about almost as high as one of these thirds. Um, yeah, you can bring it up that high. This one down here not quite as far. It's a little shorter than this one is tall. It's maybe only between, <clears throat> I don't know, a half, two thirds, three quarters in one of these lines. <clears throat> Even three quarters might be a bit far. I think you can see where I'm probably going with this. We're going to draw the arch of the skin fold that goes over this eyeball. Right, Your skin kind of wraps around and uh, um, I can even start really loosely just as a sketch here to show you as with a straight line to connect that top. And then this one 
coming to this bottom line in there. So you're drawing almost in this sense a, a diamond, a twisted diamond on its side, but this lower part of the diamond is a bit is a bit shorter, right? So when we go back over this, you can make an arch, right? And then here it's the same thing, an arc line going underneath. And the eye, the iris, the interesting thing, it's not going to go exactly center on that line. It's going to sit up a little bit. Um, the top eyelid partially covers that, uh, that iris. So I always make it a little bit wider than these thirds. Have the have the bottom of it touch the uh, the bottom eyelid, and the circle ends up being, which is half covered by the eyelid, uh, ends up getting half tucked in. Even that's maybe a little bit big. Let's let's go back just a tiny bit here. It doesn't cover that much. Um, that's a little bit better. It's just a little bit over the top here, like that, right? And the eye is there. So you can see right there. You got your eye shape right there. Again, this is all the basic stuff that you put in your head and then you'll never really need to revisit this again. Because once you go on to develop your drawing skills, uh, this stuff really isn't that prevalent. And you're just starting, yeah, you need some sort of little foundation to build off of and then once you've got this, which doesn't take long, you can sit down, sketch this out really fast, and then you got it. You know it, right? You can do one of these, and that's that's all you kind of really need. The trickier part is getting the eyes to look in the right direction. So I've talked about before in a previous video about treating these circles as spheres, as a three-dimensional object, right? So let's uh, let me put another one down here, just under here. Concentrate on this guy for just a minute. I'm running out of space. It's so low. Let me just uh, adjust my monitor here because I'm drawing in a really awkward position. All right. So let's let's say this is the eye. And I'm going to draw a center line across the middle all the way around and across uh, vertically all the way around. I'll make it sort of look three-dimensional. And it's tipping down slightly. So this is the front here and the front here. And if you draw a line through here, intersecting the front and the back, going all the way through, right? that would be the direction the eye is looking. And then the pupil and the iris is right there. Does that make sense? When you've got two eyes together in a character, if you're drawing a character or even a, something a little more lifelike, it's the same idea again. The, uh, whoops, that sort of has a cross line there on it. Let me go back a little bit here. It's not a very good setup for me. I gotta figure this out. It, my, my tablet is slightly low. And, um, to be picked up by the camera, I'm leaning back a little bit from it so I'm not in a very good drawing position I need this to be raised a bit more I should be up here um, as you come down it's easier for this the, the tablet to be tilted a little bit more down flat which I'm doing I know you can't see it but it's on a little more flatter sir uh, flatter angle about 45 degrees here now at the moment so when you got the two eyes, and it's the same thing again, you you can kind of, if you want this character looking, here, let me change the direction. Let's suppose they're looking up to the right. So you can, the eyes curve like this, right? And it's the same thing here, because they, they move in unison. Along 
activated. The arch of the nose comes in, and if you ever look at the, let me do a little study of the skull. The eyes, um, there's a bridge of your nose here because this whole area is kind of where the eyes fit into. So it makes like a, a mask kind of pattern like this. And that's why your eyebrows, they come off this bridge of the nose. Like that. And this one on a three quarter view. In here. It's not very clean, but you can you can get the idea. And this this makes like a kind of a panel that, that like a fold panel that your eyes kind of fit into. I see a lot of character designs in animation that have that kind of. It's like the uh, um, it's like a windshield and then the the hood <laughs> a little bit more flat and back. It's a way to think of that. Uh, let me open up another another page here. I don't really need to save this. Anybody need this? Anybody need to screenshot this or anything? <laughs> I, I, um, I don't know. I'm sure a lot of other artists have covered this in their work and probably even better than I am, but I'm just giving you stuff. It's hard for me to pull out stuff out of the back of my head that's kind of wedged in there that comes out when I draw, but then to try and take it to break it down and explain it, it's a bit awkward. I don't know. It's like when you're trying to explain something you do over and over and over and over again and you're already kind of jumping through steps when trying to explain it to somebody because it's things that you just naturally know but another person doesn't know this and so they're like wait 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 what how, what and it's like yeah i just i just did it because i know how to do it so it's it's hard to do it's hard to explain things like this uh let's go to new come on Don't need to save it. I the one thing that's frustrating about this program, I love Sketchbook, and it's a shame that it will never be updated. Uh, they're not putting any any real effort anymore. It's offered for free on Autodesk, and it's a really nice program. I love their tools; they're very natural. Uh, all their pencils and erasers and paint brushes and the charcoal and pencil crayons all has a really nice natural feel to it. And uh, it's just a shame that it will never be updated because they don't want to. Uh, they're concentrating on more of their paid stuff, so they they figure this was kind of dated. I guess I don't know. They 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 won't upgrade it anymore, which I think is really too bad. Um, this is like their acrylic palette, and I, I I don't know. I think this is really terrific, and there's some nice smudging and blending tools. And I'm just kind of playing around with it here. Oh, look at this. That's like a really nice. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. I just started playing with this and it, it just, it, the tools are so nice. They work so well in this. And, uh, the only thing I don't like, there's a couple of things that, that kind of are hit and miss here for me, but the one thing I don't like is that in every other program to zoom into your page, you uh, just hit the command plus key on the Mac. I'm not sure what it is on the Windows, but command plus and or the command minus to move back. You can't do that. If I hit those, they they don't they won't they won't do anything. You've got to pick this magnifying glass and then zoom in and out. Um, sometimes the mouse will and then it won't. Like it, it kind of, yeah, see it zoom, it'll zoom out. When you scroll your finger, it scrolls up and down. There's no gestures on that. Maybe on the trackpad it might, but 
tends to not do what you want it to do if you try to use your mouse. See, it just keeps zooming away. Oh, now it is. Anyway, so it's just it's just easier to grab this and then zoom it and you can move it back and forth. That's one of the things I don't really like with it, but I can live with it just because it is it is such a nice and look at this Copic Copic markers and it has it has the, a really huge Copic library in here with a colorless blender and uh, the markers are really nice I just wish they were a little larger uh, like the brush pen that's as big as it gets right there it won't get any bigger than that um, so in this case I tend to use the um, keeps highlighting for me stop doing that uh, I, I just use the flat edge brush or there's the wide which they don't even sell anymore the wide is nice because it can cover a vast area and um, and it really mimics them quite well just the only thing is is that when you're working with real Copics you can put down a couple of colors and then just kind of start blending them together on the page where this really won't do that but you can get the colorless blender but the colorless blender kind of more erases it it lifts the color and then it kind of kind of blends not quite like I think the actual colorless blender does what does work really nice is the blur tool I can go over here with the blur tool and uh, turn the strength up and it's not super strong but it does do a nice nice job with that um, keeping the intensity but kind of <clears throat> blurring the edges when you have to use a, uh, when you want to put in another color I'm sorry I got totally sidetracked because I actually really just love playing with this so look, we'll do that and the blur tool kind of Kind of blurs it but the colorless blender kind of lifts the color and and uh, unfortunately kind of dissolves it which I find really odd yeah it just it just almost erases it while pushing it what does the white do there's like a white yeah that doesn't do anything but the blur tool is nice. I just wish the blur tool could get a little blurrier. It won't go any higher. No. There is some other uh, blenders here that can work. Like there is a whole, there's a smudge set which you could maybe use. Um, but there is where is it? Uh, in some of them there is some actual nice. Uh, this one's a wash. That's a little different. That's not what I wanted. Oh, I've lost it. There's a really 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 nice set of. Um, Of blending tools. What do I do with them? Oh, here we go. Co colorless, it's called. And uh, some of these do the same thing. It kind of lifts the color. Uh, some of them, some of them actually do a nice. Whoa! <laughs> no, I don't like that. It's not bad. And that's very soft. But it does the same thing, it's kind of lifting it. There's one in here that I liked. That one's not bad.
This one, I'm not sure. This just puts something down. I, I don't know if that's supposed to. Mm, I'm just experimenting. I got way off topic. <laughs> No one watches myself anyways, so oh it does, it kind of smudges it together. Alright, okay, I can see a little bit. That picks up the color, I guess, of whatever you're putting down. Boy, it keeps going with it, eh? Alright. Anyways, that's that's uh just a little bit of uh, sketchbook pro 101. Actually, it's not even called sketchbook pro anymore, it's just sketchbook. So let's get rid of this, but the Copic library is definitely really nice. We can play around with that. If you can't afford real pro, uh, real Copics, but you have a drawing tablet, you can always get the sketchbook program for free from uh, Autodesk. What was I talking about? Eyes. Drawing the eyes. So when I do eyes now, I, I, um, I have such a f quick way of doing it now. Um, Try and keep this handy here. I'm drawing everything kind of lumpy today. Can't keep my hand very straight. So I suppose I do a little bit of a three quarter view here. And I'm used to working kind of cartoonish. So the eye, um, <clears throat> the eyes fit in as it goes around. Let me back up here a little bit. The eyes, uh, when putting them on the head, uh, were rotating. So this eye here will sort of come a little, it starts to turn a little bit, but it's it's still facing you. Where this eye, you can narrow out because it's, it started disappearing away from you. It's turning away, so <clears throat> it'll kind of narrow out. And this is where the eye kind of and the skull comes in and out here. And I'm going to have them looking down to the side. Now, in animation, you have to make everything kind of a solid line when you do it. Uh, sometimes in illustration, what they'll do is, when drawing the eyes, um, the direction, if the eye is turned, oh, that's kind of bad. Wait a second, let me back it up. I just need the one here. They'll leave this area here a little bit blank because it kind of helps with the direction it helps you sort of see the iris without it blocking off and there's a bit of light reflection but they'll bring this in like this and you can see here at the bottom there's there's not there's not as much there, and it helps kind of emphasize with this black iris here where that is in the eye itself. And uh, it helps give a little more direction. But I was kind of brought through animation, so everything's kind of a closed line uh, when we do that. So, you know, when I draw a female eye here, which kind of angles up. It's looking down. There's this little thing here. And this can be where the eyelashes can go off of. And it's a little darker here. So So 
So yeah, so it's uh, it's all very solid and closed, <clears throat> especially in working in rough. And I've just kind of done it that way. Uh, I've always had the eyes enclosed. Even I've gone and done caricatures in the park. I mean, you can kind of just quickly do it, I suppose, and you can kind of leave it like that. But I've always, uh, I've always enclosed the eyes. Um. <clears throat> A good idea if you if you're new to drawing is to have a look at the skull. Find a um, a photograph of a of a skull online, uh, a real one or as realistic as possible. Not don't don't look at another drawing. Uh, find an actual picture and try drawing it. It's not terribly exciting. It's like oh that's boring, but it gives you an idea of what you're working with. <clears throat> Where you. Once you learn rules, it's easier to know how to break them or to bend them or do more with them. Uh, so once you get that foundation, uh, you have so much more to play with. Uh, and uh, that's why in, in drawing school, they emphasize so much on life drawing. No matter what program you take, whether if you go to school and take animation or illustration or anything, you're going to have a degree of life drawing. And I think everyone should. If you're going to put pencil to paper and you want to be an artist, you should learn the human figure, learn the skeleton, uh, learn how the muscles fit around the skeleton, and uh, uh, how the body works. Uh, especially if you're going to animation, you've got to know that. Uh, so yeah, so that's my recommendation. I'm going to stop, because this is kind of pointless. I've had, I think, one, maybe two viewers. One of the viewers is me, and there's another mystery viewer, I'm not sure who that is there's always shows two at least two and i don't know who the other the other one is um <clears throat> had a friend of mine that was in here last night but that's uh that's that i'm gonna call it here for the night and if you watch this if you were the other magic person here who was watching this i appreciate it i'll try and get an actual proper video done shortly i'm not sure really where to kind of go from here i've been a little bit in limbo uh, trying to figure out how to redirect uh, my channel and how I want to do it. Um, yeah, because the direction I'm doing is just kind of boring. I'm not holding, not holding people's interests. So I'm gonna see if I can, if I can do something different with it. But I've got something fun coming up. I hope. All right. So thank you for watching, 